Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create. And I went ahead and installed page five and then realized I wasn't recording. So I'm gonna go over that one more time. It's just simple, it's a single flap and it is just like page four, only as you can see, you know, they're opposite of one another. So you're gonna start with a rectangle that is eight inches tall and seven inches wide, eight by seven. Then you're gonna score a half inch on the seven inch side, which is gonna become our hinge. You're gonna fold that over and then you're gonna put a tick mark. What this should be is the edge of your seven because you've folded in um, a half inch. So now this should be six and a half inches. So you actually should just be able to come across at three and trim to that diagonal to that point. So over here is three and down here is six and a half and that is after you fold in your hinge, okay? So three by six and a half, cut on your diagonal and install on the right hand side of page five. Sorry that uh, I hadn't hit record prior to doing that. I'll try to be more careful on page six. See you in a few. Good morning everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we're gonna start working on page four, page four. Okay, uh, in page four, we've got this single flap. It's over on the right-hand side. <clears throat> and I think in page four, I forgot to actually record installing it, but I think page five, we're okay. So we're gonna start decorating, and I kinda wanted to show you, you know, kind of where we're going. Um, so as we put this together, um, you'll have the end in mind. Um, okay, so we're gonna start by shuffling all of this out of the way. <clears throat> We're gonna put in this strip over on the edge, and then I'm gonna put a matching strip on this side. <clears throat> so we'll start there. <clears throat> I hope everybody's doing well. We're having a super warm day here in San Diego. Um, I'm, I'm super excited about going to a retreat this weekend. It's just so nice to get out with like-minded people again. And, uh, and of course, get away from home and chores and laundry and <laughs> dishes for a little bit. <clears throat> I love my hus husband a bit, but he's a TV watcher and um, in the evening. And so I'm constantly getting drug out of my craft room to go, come see this. <laughs> it's sweet, but it's it makes it hard to be productive. So... He's teetering on uh, the edge of retirement. So he's in between jobs right now and there's some question of whether or not he's gonna go back to work or if we're just gonna call it quits um, from here on out. And of course that'll depend largely on whether or not we stay in California. If we stay, he has to go back to work. And uh, yeah, so we've been sort of exploring ideas about where to move. That's a little bit more retirement friendly in terms of taxes and cost of living <clears throat> and San Diego is not one of those places it's probably one of the most expensive places to work so anyways blah 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 that's enough about me <clears throat> okay uh, these strips are from the 12 by 12 collection this is also from a 12 by 12 I mentioned in the last video I had to break into a second pack of the DCE 12 by 12, I was not gonna have enough paper with a single 12 by 12 DCE and a single eight by eight pack. So I opened, and that was at page four, so I knew I was in, tro in trouble uh, when you're running out of large pieces at page four, you're only halfway through. Um, so yeah, so I opened a second one. So like I had mentioned before, this is a large format, uh, 11 inches wide is the widest I've done. Um, and I do think it makes it nice for larger pictures, but um, it, it, it takes a lot of paper. So there's a trade-off. <clears throat> it's still smaller than a 12 by 12, but it takes a lot, it takes a lot. Okay, let's put this in now. So I'm gonna tell you this measurement. I'm pretty sure I went over it earlier, but I'll tell you again. The um, the flap, you're gonna start with a seven by eight. Seven inches across or deep and eight inches tall, high. And then you're gonna cut um, a diagonal. You're gonna score a half inch, fold it under, 
mark a tick mark at three and then you're going to go to the point and that's how you're going to come up with this diagonal <clears throat> And this has been a lot of fun for me because it is different. Okay, so we can cover that and we can cover this. And then we got to get our heads wrapped around where we're going to put a magnet before we do too much more. I know I'm going to need to trim this down um, because of my half inch border here. ink that and then we're going to start thinking about where that magnet's going to go. <clears throat> okay, so on the front I have, I had, here it is, um, I'm going to use this journaling card right here and um, and then on the back side of the journaling card, I want to put uh, another photo mat that's going to go this way. It's probably not going to be this paper, but it's going to go in this direction. So thinking. And then I'm going to put this 5x7 down here, which is going to go this direction. So that's a lot to pass through, and I don't think my card's going to reach across it. So I think what I'm going to do is put a magnet here and a magnet here, but first let me shift this around and make sure that's where I'm going to put it. <clears throat> Actually, I like this better. So I may put, this is pretty heavy, I may put... Um, What might I do? <clears throat> I can put a magnet under here, but because this is a bifold, I'm not sure I want to do that. <clears throat> but, because it's going to want to pull that up. Okay, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and start by putting this down. And it's roughly... What did I... Oh, I was going to say, oh my gosh, that's so far off. It's because it's not glued down. This is uh, roughly centered, and then I'm um, move, shifting it so this point is on the diagonal. I'm going to draw a quick corner. I'm going to pull my ruler in and make sure it's squared off of the pocket page. And there it is. It's hard to see. But I'm going to shift it over. Just for ease, I'm, I'm shifting it over to a full inch line, and I'm going to use that as my guide. So now I know where to put my glue.
So actually I've come in, I'd say about a quarter inch. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me, that looks good. Oh, I forgot to put something on the back of this. Oh, and that's because I'm gonna put a magnet, that's right. That's right. I think I was gonna use this on the back. Yes, I am. Um, so, put a couple of tick marks and I'll turn that down. So right now we know we want to put a magnet on the top of this corner, so let's go ahead and do that. <coughs> We're having serious Santa Anna's. <coughs> and I like it dry and hot, <coughs> but it's, it's always a little bit worrisome because of fires. We have um, serious issues with fires. You know what? I don't like that. I'm not getting enough space around it. <clears throat> Just want to make sure that it's not going to be, the tape won't be exposed when I get my mat down. Okay, now we can put the opposing magnet. <clears throat> okay, now let's stack stacking stuff up again and see how our magnet holds. Now we know we're going to have an additional layer of paper here. And we're going to have one, two, three, one, two, three, four layers of papers here. So that's counting the, um, the decorative paper on the inside and out and the, the uh, cardstock. So let's see if it's all going to lay down for us and stay down. Actually, oh, and then I have to add this too. Is it still holding? Not as much as I'd like. <clears throat> so the other thing is I can redo this uh, and when I when I glue it down I can make sure there's a magnet under this instead of under here. So I think that's what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna remake this little piece and put a magnet under it and I'll save this for something else. There we go. So that's just too many layers for the weight that it's trying to hold down. So I've got I've got plenty of this paper, um, and it just that happened to be a scrap that I used, so I could use any size I want, as can you. It's just about how it visually stacks. I want it to go under. I kind of want this open because I'm going to put a couple of um, shapes up here, I think. Yeah, I like it. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to get some cardstock behind this. And it just so happens that this piece is four by six. Add some ink if I haven't already. All right. <clears throat> okay, so we can set these aside. We can go ahead and decorate this and then locate it. 
So I've chosen uh, this pattern, and both of these are from the 8x8 collection. And I chose it because, <coughs> excuse me, I haven't used it yet. <coughs> in the, and I need to take a little more off. In the book. Better. Uh, this card is five by seven finished, so you'll start with a ten by seven inch piece of paper, score it five inches, and you get a five by seven finished card. Or, of course, if you don't want to have the extra photo space that you get inside, um, you can um, just make this a flat photo mat. That will also save you on your designer paper. Because if Otherwise, if you open it up, so you need um, three five by seven designer papers if you do it my way, and if you just do it as a flat photo mat, you just need one. <clears throat> and I, these are five by seven, but I'm in my mind, I still see a four by six on here with a nice border all the way around it. <clears throat> of course, if you're gonna put a five by seven on it, you don't need to really decorate it because the photo is the decoration, so that's, Okay, this is a directional uh, print on the other side, so I was just verifying that I'm going to put this in right side up. It's not obvious by the patterns themselves, but there's some words in the background. And sometimes I wish graphic wouldn't do that. I wish they would leave the words out, because then I could use this in any direction I wanted. So I could have mounted it this way. But that's pushing me to a direction. <clears throat> like these, you can turn it vertical or horizontal. No problem, either way. Okay, so we can go ahead and glue this down now. Since we're not gonna put a magnet under it. It's gonna go under our orange layer. This has been a fun book, even though it's not complicated. Um, it's doing the layers is fun. Um, it, it feels very, very creative. <clears throat> and some of you may want to hold off on adding some of the layers because you might want to know what photo you're putting in first. So you can go either way. <clears throat> I think this would make a very nice Mother's Day um, photo album. Just the... It's very girly, so I think it would be very pretty for that. It's pretty elegant, actually. Okay, I'm going to figure out where I want this. And then I'm going to slide my orange paper out. I just want to see it visually. I think I want it on both sides. Yeah, more like that. And then um, I can draw some lines for the black cardstock and then add a magnet. Okay, and then like I said, I'm planning on putting a little something something up there. So I'm going to remove all that and I'm going to install it right here, right about here. Draw a quick corner so I know where I'm going. This is also a great way to sneak a magnet in if you forget on your base. Or if whatever you're applying to your base is so thick that you want to get as much of your cardstock built up before you add a magnet, which is what we're doing right now. Okay, uh, I can use this magnet still. Just need some new tape. Or oh, actually, I don't really need new tape. I can just tear off. Ow! 
Nope, I can't because that is the polar side. The polar opposite. There we go. <clears throat> so, hey, I want to thank everybody for tuning in and hanging out with us here at Scrap and Crate. We really appreciate it. I am, uh, I think, coming up on 22,000 subscribers, and that is just wonderful. That's all you guys. I really appreciate it. Um, it's kind of interesting. My husband's a huge YouTube watcher, and he watches me occasionally. <laughs> um, I think it's kind of funny because sometimes I'll walk in there and he'll be watching one of my videos. Anyway, and then I got a sister in Texas who turns me on so she can... Um, listen to my voice because I don't get to see her very often. I think that's so sweet. any rate, um, I just really want to thank you guys for tuning in. And like I said, he's a YouTube watcher and he's a Jeeper as well. So he's always watching these Overland videos. And I'm just so impressed with some of those channels. They do so, so much. It's amazing. Um, you know, their fan following is just incredible. They've got hundreds of thousands. It's like, wow. That is so impressive. Of course, I know our our little community isn't quite that that large, but I'm, well, I'm sure there's a hundred thousand people. But I'm sure there's millions of people that uh, participate in those overlanding kinds of things. Anyways, it's kind of interesting to watch and and see. And a lot of theirs is about technique and uh, experience, and I, I would kind of liken us to that as well. We have some tutorials, and I like to try to bring in my experience so you guys can learn from some of it. And sometimes we're experiencing it at the same same time because you're watching me and I'm making mistakes and correcting them as I go. So anyways, it's kind of interesting. So there we go. That Oh, you know what? I don't like that. I don't like it. I'm going to move it. I, I want to go. Ah, I want to go higher. I can't. I blew it. I actually wanted more of that red to pop out. Oh, well, it is what it is. Now I'm going to layer this in, and I think it'll all be okay. Yeah. Okay, so on this one, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to glue half down and the bottom, and then I'm going to leave a little tuck spot here. So I'm nothing scientific here. I'm just going about halfway. And then, of course, we've got to get a nice, I don't know, one and a half, two inch on the bottom to make sure it's secure. And then I'm going to do a bead down here. And that void will allow us to tuck in a, a little tag or something, which I plan to do. Just when you're doing this, make sure you're flipping it over and getting the pocket on the side you want. It doesn't really matter. You could put it on either side, whatever you like better. But I definitely wanted my tuck spot to be uh, toward the spine. Why? I don't know. It just seemed like the right thing. Okay, let's take a look at location. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm just going to make sure it's straight and get any excess glue up. Get it all pressed into place. Yeah, and a little extra glue there and there. Okay, look at that. It's so pretty. I love it. I love these colors. Um, this red, orange, whatever it is. Okay, so now um, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Now I need, we're going to do a little decorating. We also need to cover this and add a photo mat. So I may use this as a photo mat and it is just so you know, four by four. Yep. It's a little four by four photo. So I need to put something here that's not orange. <laughs> so let's see. And black and white would look good, but I could also pull in color. Let's see how that looks. Mm, nah, it's not great, but it works. I'm going to trim it down, take a closer look at it. And I'm just going to cut it at an angle real quick. Oh, I over trimmed it. Well, that's, I'll get a visual on it. <clears throat> If I can find my marks, they're so hard to see on this. Let's see that. Let's see how it looks. Okay, mm, I'm actually I like it better than I thought I would. And then on here, 
I think what I was going to do, you can see I've got too much of a border down here and I'm going to mask that. How? I don't know yet. Probably by doing something that draws your eye away from it. And then do I have... <clears throat> Okay, let's close it and see how that looks. I kind of like pulling the blue back in because we've got blue here and that creates some balance. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and set these down. Wow, that magnet's doing its trick. Okay. These triangles, I think are two inches across. But I'll tell you in a second. I'm just pushing it over so it's coming to the intersection of all three of these are coming to the same intersection. Um, let me verify this. Yeah, it's two inches across the bottom <clears throat> by two and a half inches high. Two inches across the bottom, two inches high. Um, find your center point at one and then just trim from the bottom to the top, from the point to creating a new point. So that's how I did that. And I just had some scraps, so I, I pre-made a few of these um, so that I could grab them as I go. Sometimes I get to a point where I'm like, I don't like any of the ones I created, so I have to do something different. <clears throat> I cut out another piece. I like it better up here. That's what we're gonna do. And of course, this is a great place for, you know, um, stickers. Yep, I like it. I like it, I like it. And then I've got a couple more done that I'm gonna put on the inside. And I think these are fun on the inside because they'll hold down your photos. I don't know if I like that color though. So I've got a dark orange. You know what I think the problem is they're too big. The two inch ones are too big so I might have to make some smaller ones. I think I'm about done. Yeah, I don't want to add any more here. Now we can go ahead and cover the back of this with, um, I think I like this. So I had trimmed it a little short. So I am going to create another one that's a little bit bigger. And I've got a scrap that'll cover this. So there's, I'm not cutting it off my 12 by 12. Oh, it looks like I cut it on the wrong angle anyway. Um, and when I say the wrong angle, I mean um, it was turned uh, 45 degrees from upright pencil. I think I want to turn this down to six and a quarter, and then we'll trim it from there. I don't want to make the same mistake twice. does not show up on this print. I'm going to have to keep testing because I can't see the marks. Okay, 
Okay, we can ink it. Just trying to lift that ever so slightly so I can slide this under. <clears throat> Almost done, guys. Mm -hmm. Bye, guys. I mean, gals, and well, everyone. <laughs> we do, we do have a couple, not many, uh, male followers. Howdy, howdy, guys. If you're around. Oh, and by the way, if you are a mini book maker and um, you haven't yet, go over to Facebook, Scrap and Create, and we've got a small community over there that share their albums. Sometimes they share their version of this or just what they're working on, and uh, it's a great little community. <clears throat> we do some sharing there. We ask that you don't advertise. If you want to do some advertising on our channel, please contact us directly at contact at Scrap and Create. And provided it's not a direct competition, we will definitely entertain the idea. So in fact, an example of that is uh, Claire Chevelle from My Creative Spirit. Um, we, She's from UK and um, she has this tape that we now sell through our shop as a United States distributor. So. There's some things that will entertain, um, but as long as you're, if you're a direct con contributor in the United States and its territories, well, please uh, ask for permission first. Anyways, there's not a lot of that, by the way. Mostly uh, everything on there is people sharing their current projects. <clears throat> and I love it when people share a project that they built off my tutorial. And the reason is, because then I know you guys can follow my instructions. Even though I ask for feedback all the time to make, you know, to improve my process and videos, I get very little feedback. Um, you know, I get some, but not much. And as, to the extent that I can, I incorporate it. So some people asked recently, and I'll cover this right now, what does the build number mean? And that is a direct um, implementation of a suggestion from a viewer who said, I would like to know the process, um, the sequence that you're actually building your album in, meaning when are you cutting through what paper at what point in the in the book? So the page numbers represent the sequence of the book. That's not necessarily how I design the book or how I cut into the designer paper. The build represents that. So page one, build one would mean that that's the first time I cut through the designer paper. But if it says build one, or if it says page one, build eight, that means that those papers came from what was left after I built page two through seven. So it's just another piece of information that helps, um, I think, make sure that you have the right size papers left when you get to the page you're working on or that uh, the page in the tutorial that you're working on. So you can either build it in the same sequence that I did and then resequence it for installment in the book, or you can just build it from page one through page eight. And when I say page, it's it's the one, it's a single side of a pocket page. So this is a page. So at any rate, that is it for page five. And that's my little quick uh, definition. Oh, no, it's not. I gotta get this in. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put this here. And I like it, pulls this back in. And I think it looks lovely. Oh, and I was gonna put a little tag in here, and here it is, there we go. So there's my little tag that's adding a little bit more blue, creating a little bit more balance, I think. All right. I'm just kind of looking for an even border. That's cool, that's super cool. 
And then I fussy cut these ladies out at some point. I'm trying to do, I might put them right here. I'm gonna ink them and put them right here. I'm gonna trim off this. I had cut them out of a frame, so there's a little awkwardness on the bottom. So I probably will straighten that out if I can <clears throat> without losing too much of the ladies. You know what, it doesn't fit in my trimmer, so I'm gonna have to do it by hand. So I'm gonna square up the two edges. All right, there we go. What do you guys think? Is that fun? I'm gonna cut the edge, I'm gonna soften the edge. So this came out of a frame, so there's a hard edge on both sides, and I'm just gonna leave the hard edge on the side that I'm gluing it to, and I'll cut this based on the image. There we go, I think I like it. I decided I like it better on this side because of this white gap um, against the black. I think it looks really good. And I need to ink it. Ugh, do I, do I, you know what, I'm not gonna ink it. I hate inking little things. One of the ways to do it is to lay it upside down and just stamp around it, but I'm lazy. I'm lazy, not gonna do it. If it wasn't a cream, I might. Because then the the core would stand out so much, but because this already has a cream background, when I say it, I mean the cut apart. Um, there we go. All right, and you can still get a little, you know, photo in here. Okay. Okay, our last, so that's that. I don't wanna put anything here, here. I think I'm done. I don't wanna overdo it. Okay, I think it looks good. That is the conclusion. You may find some tri small triangles in here later in the walkthrough, but that is the conclusion of page five, at least in the main design part. Let me add a couple more embellishments. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, and listen to me babble on. Talk to you guys soon. We'll be back with um, page six soon.